all thought has vibration. Thoughts are just energy forms and every thought that you have and you have several thoughts back to back to back to back. One of the most powerful ingredients of your mind is your ego. And your ego is that part of your mind that is saying, what about me? What about me? It always wants to put you before anybody else. It is that part of your mind that says you don't need to apologize for this and it's going to be a complete loss of face. You need to put your interests before everybody else. You matter first. The most dangerous part of our mind, the most dangerous part of our mind, the one that takes us away from ourselves, is our ego. So the next time you get upset with somebody, most often it's a close family member that you're upset with or your boss. These are the only two people that are at the receiving end. Those are the first two people to, that you, you catch on to, right? And before you say that I'm doing everything that I can, I'm doing my best, the best job that I can. Before you say all that, ask yourself, on whose behalf am I getting annoyed? If you've been just, just been yelled, yelled at for not putting away your, your uh, plate in the sink and you do everything but you don't put your plate in the sink, you're going to do it, right? You were just about to do it. But you don't have the patience to just say that I'll do it now and that's all it takes I'll do it now it is a complete diffusing of the situation nobody is out to get you you don't need to defend yourself or the entire world and you don't need to get into a fight we fight over the smallest issues we worry about you know whether this person is treating us rightly, we were invited to this event. You know, if uh, uh, you were the center, they ignored you at this place. You deserve much more attention. Your job matters more than anybody else. Your freedom and your rights matter much more than anybody else. You have a right to choose whether to breathe or not, or whether to wear your mask, or the, whether to wear glasses, or whether to even wear clothes. We never stop to think if our actions are affecting anybody else. Uh, three months ago, m maybe a little bit more than that, I went to Publix. I was in a rush. And I've put my stuff into my trunk and then I just moved the cart to the front, you know, in between the cars. Now, how many of you are guilty of doing that? Anybody? Okay, we all do it, right? We all do it. And this lady looked at me and she said, for crying out loud, why would you put the cart there? It's going to roll in into another car and hit the car. The place to stack your carts is right over there. It's 20 steps. You know, my first reaction was, how dare you tell me where to keep my cart? I, I, will, I will keep my cart wherever I wish to. But then I just stopped and I said, you know, you are so right. Do you know that after that, every time I put the cart, I say, I'm doing it so that it doesn't spoil someone else's car. It's a small act. I never keep my cart in front of my car, ever. I always go and put it where it's supposed to, supposed to go. Why? Because this is our civic duty. Our duty, all our acts, 
all that we do every day should be in the service of others. Those thoughts, those thoughts that you want to claim for yourself, your own personal success, will receive glory for a very brief time and it will be extinguished equally fast. The flame will rise, you've got this blast of oxygen, but it will go completely because you cannot sustain it. The universe functions better if the ultimate goal is the collective good of the community, collective good of the family, Collective good of the city that you live in. Collective good of the state that we live in. Collective good of the country that you live in. And the collective good of the world. Today, our biggest threat is not who is the President of the United States, but more than that, will humanity survive another couple of generations? Will our grandchildren live to see a sunrise? Live to be able, will be fighting over food, wondering where, you know, how they can purchase the next bag of oxygen or the next cylinder of oxygen so they can breathe. This is going to be our big challenge. This is going to be our huge challenge. But if we are so focused on whether I don't want to wear a mask, I don't want to be asked to do this, I don't want to do this for myself, we don't have the time, the patience, the energy to think of the world. And small interests, narrow interests, they don't work. They work for a while. The joy that you get from doing for, for, a, for a big community overwhelms everything else. Now I'll tell you for a fact, I really don't enjoy my daily cooking. But once a year on Varalakshmi Puja, I invite my friends to come and I give them a huge spread. And my friends come and they enjoy that food. And just the fact that they enjoy eating it, the satisfaction that that gives you when you feed somebody, I was standing in a line in Mexico City and there was this boy in front of me. He had bought two loaves of bread and he didn't have the money to pay for it. Now without thinking, I paid for him. I didn't need to. I could say this is not none of my business. I don't need to involve myself in this. But from the time I was a little child, from the time I can remember, we always were trained to do stuff for others. To give up your bed for the for elders. To give up the last bit of food for someone else. You have, you know, two stuffed peppers on the table and there are five people there. You don't take both of them and put them on your plate. I mean, you can. But to divide it up is so much more fun. Sometimes my husband destroys the baklava because he has to divide it into equal pieces so everybody gets it. So it's all powdery pieces of nuts at the end of it. But I get what he's saying. Don't feed yourself first. Feed everybody else. And what has happened in this, in this economy, in this country, in this world that we live in, people have become too stuck on their own selfish, small needs. One need. One need more than anything else. Right now, the biggest challenge facing us is this pandemic, which is keeping us in our homes, not allowing us to live a normal life not allowing people to go into work the way they're supposed to and collaborate with all their colleagues and collaborate with all their friends. Not allowing young people to get married and invite their friends. 
it has limited us in more ways than one. Human beings need contact with each other. And the only way it is going to get solved is if we together, as a nation, not as individual people, that we work as a nation towards the collective good of everybody. We all deserve a good life. We all deserve to do better. We all deserve the highest possible. People work very hard. It isn't just successful people that work hard. It isn't just the NBA players and the basketball players who make all that money that work hard. The person who cleans your drive. And I've noticed I have had my uh, screens cleaned and, and uh, you know, they've just been redone. And in the past, People have come and done a job in three hours and gone, taken the money and gone. But these two boys stayed for three days with such diligence, with such pride in their work. They repaired every single screw. They painted over every single stain. And both Rajiv and myself watched in utter amazement. This work ethic, that this pride that people take, this ability to work so hard from 9 in the morning, in the hot sun, till 6 in the evening, sometimes even after the sunset. Everybody works hard. Everybody works hard to do well. But you can give a little bit for the collective good of everybody else. It is not about you. It is what you can do for someone else. What can you do to help someone else's feeling of doom and gloom? It is not me versus you. It is not me the Democrat and you the Republican and we think completely different. No, we are both human beings. We have the same needs. We just want to live our lives and be happy. Ultimately, what is it that we want? We just want to be happy. I mean, having a nice house and a nice car definitely helps. But even if you don't have that, even if you have the mansion, ultimately we all want to live with each other. We all need each other. Nobody can live in this world alone. No country can live alone. Let alone, we're talking about individuals, we cannot, as a country, if the United States said we are cutting ourselves off from every other country, it would not survive. It would not survive. It needs the labor from Mexico to come and pick the fruit in the, far, in, in the, in the whatever orchards. It needs masks to be sent in from China. It needs manpower to, to work those computers from India. And then the Philippines and wherever else, I don't know what, who does what, but I know one thing. We are all in this together. We have to stop thinking. We can reach out to each other. We can reach out to one another. We can, we can, we have to understand that there is something in us that unites us. We are human beings first and foremost. Humanity is the one that is most at risk. And here we are thinking of how much we are going to save $2,000 on taxes. And casting our vote accordingly. Choose the best person for the job. The one who cares about you. The one who is going to do for, for the entire country, for the entire world. That's how you have to look. You have to look much more globally. You have to involve yourself in not just in WhatsApp chats and say, oh, this is happening, that is happening. But to actually give of yourself to a cause that helps others. This is not the time to think of a narrow sense of me, me, me. This is the time to reach out. Reach out to everybody. People are under a lot of stress today.
It's my guy or the other guy that's winning. And it mustn't be like that. It mustn't be like that. We need to move towards a new generation and a new way of thinking, which other countries have been able to do. But we aren't a divided nation. We are not the enemy. We are all in it together. All in it together. And it's up to each one of us to reach out to one person and say that you can, you can feel the way you want politically. You can have your political ideologies. But let's work together. Let's take some of your ideas. Let's take some of mine. We cannot build walls between us and isolate ourselves so completely that I am right and you are wrong and he is a wolf and I am, I am the sheep. No. What do you want more than anything else? What do you want in your life? You want for your children and your grandchildren to live and enjoy this beautiful world that we are in. To admire the sunrises and to see the northern lights and to see the Taj Mahal and to see the beautiful Pacific Ocean, the waves and the dolphins leaping in it. We have a beautiful country, a beautiful life. Don't mar it. Don't mar it by thinking just of yourself. You're not here alone. Become a beacon of hope for others. Become that fire of, of encouragement, of positivity. But we can do all of this together. We are all in it together. We're born and we die. Every one of us. Every one of us. And we all have the same kind of thoughts. And we've all built a different version of reality. And we've all built walls around us. And this needs to go. This needs to go. You are more than just your ego. You are more than just your thoughts that tell you that you are special, that tell you that your needs trounce others. You're more than the intelligence that tells you that you are the smart one and they are stupid. You are so much more than that. Go deeper within, go deeper, beyond, beyond the mind, the body, the intellect, the memories, the ego. To your natural self, that true self, that connection, that true longing for the love that you are, the love, the caring and sharing, that is who you are. That is your true nature. That's what will bring that eternal smile on your lips and eternal joy in your heart. That's what we all aspire for. Om Namah Shivaya.